Hey guys, today was planned to show you Logic Pro on the iPad, but then I realized I found out something that is actually super interesting for us filmmakers. So I started talking about all of this and realized later that most of the time I'm basically just talking about that. So I will cut a lot of the fluff away about Logic. Maybe I show you a little bit, but basically this video now is about the first part, which is the interesting part that we can take as filmmakers from Logic and what I found out and discovered today. So have fun with that. Back to Daniel. So I'm in Logic Pro and when I was playing around with Logic Pro today, I discovered something very interesting that will also change the cause of DaVinci Resolve, like the trajectory for DaVinci Resolve and also Final Cut. Because both of those programs don't have that yet, what Logic Pro already has. So what am I talking about? Let's go back. When DaVinci Resolve announced and came to the iPad, we had DaVinci Resolve with those two pages. And then we figured out we can actually have, just with shortcuts, the other pages. But the reason why some of those pages were hidden is because some of the features are not working yet properly. Some do, some not. Especially the Fairlight page is the one that crashes the most and a lot of stuff is not really working. So, and then a lot of people who are in the audio camp that make mixing and everything, they said, yeah, it's nice that we have DaVinci now on the iPad, but all the audio things that I do, I can't really do. And one reason why they can't do it is because when you start the audio game, so if you are a Logic user and you know all of this already, so welcome on board, or you already know what I'm talking about, but lots of filmmakers maybe don't know. You have a lot of different plugins from third party uh, developers that you can use on Windows, Mac, desktop. And those ones are called um, third party plugins. They use a system that's called VST, VST3. And for Mac, they have a system that's called AUV. And the newest one is AUV3. Maybe there's a newer one, but that's the one that I found out. And so what I want to share with you today is so the iPad is limited that it can only show you or use AUV3. And if I, for example, go to DaVinci Resolve and I look at the settings, I even see here on under audio plugins that DaVinci can use VST and VST3. And today when I saw that, wait a second, that what you see here on the screen is not a plugin from Logic. It's a plugin that I downloaded from a third party and now use straight in DaVinci Resolve. So all the Logic people, all the music people, they say, yes, that's it, how, that how a DAW is supposed to be. <laughs> I get you, I get you. I was working with Ableton Live back in my days before I became a filmmaker. I even had a studio, but I never really took the time to dedicate as much time into it in my craft. I played guitar, I played piano and all of the things, but when it came to filmmaking, I actually digged in and I learned a lot. So why is this now interesting? So one thing that also all the Logic people maybe kind of don't like at the moment about Logic on the iPad is that not all of the third-party plugins are available because VSTs are also the most common used format. You have to be patient that your favorite third-party plugin maker is also releasing, hopefully releasing, a AUV3 plugin. Why is it now interesting for us filmmakers? Because I looked into DaVinci and I had the question, can DaVinci actually also work with AUV3? And the answer is Yes, but the way it works on the desktop is basically here under option, you add the location of your AUV3 format. But the way it works on the iPad is different from that. Of course it's different, right? It's the iPad. <laughs> so the way it works is you have to go to the App Store and download the apps that are AUV3. And you can even open them separately as an app. So for example, this one is the app that also supports AUV. I don't even know, I can't explain what this exactly is. It's basically like a filter that makes distorted sound, okay? And so, but here in the, in Logic Pro, so many names, I have to learn all the names now. When I go back here, and I will explain you this later when we go to the second part of the video, basically here on my first track, I have all my effects and I can add new effects and I have all the logic effects. But if I scroll down, I can also add audio units, which are the AUV3 plugins. It recognizes if you installed a correct one, because not all of them work. So I, I installed a couple of them, only the free ones, I guess the paid ones who really advertise that they are AUV3 will work, but I didn't want it to spend money to just test that. So this one was a free one and I could test it and it actually works. You can click on it and then you have it. If you click it, you see it. Now I have it double there, but I don't want that. You can turn it on, turn it off. And this whole interface comes from that third party um, developer. So why is it interesting now for us? Because that means technically DaVinci Resolve is capable of doing it. We will not see VST because the iPad cannot do VST. But this shout out now goes to Blackmagic. Hey Blackmagic, if Logic Pro can do it, 
so can you. You should make sure that you can implement that very fast so then we can use it in DaVinci Resolve. All of those third-party AUV plugins. Just to be fair, I'll because I now said, hey, Blackmagic, do it, do it. It's probably more complicated than I think it is, probably. If we go to Final Cut here, so many apps open, Final Cut also can do audio effects. So if I have my clip here and I go down here to audio and scroll down, I'm in the inspector, then you see audio effects, but it doesn't recognize those AUV3. If Final Cut would do this, this would be a major advantage over DaVinci Resolve because at the moment in most areas, DaVinci Resolve is more advanced, I would say. I will make a proper video in the future about the comparison, but if Final Cut would have this or maybe even have this in a future update because Logic Pro can already do it, then this would be amazing because then you can use those third-party apps. But now comes the kicker, okay guys? It comes the kicker for all the filmmakers. We have LumaFusion. I have LumaFusion since I have an iPad. LumaFusion 3.0 is capable of plugins, third-party plugins. You go to audio and then here on the top, you go to plugins and you can add your plugins. It, and it will also recognize the AUV plugins that you installed. LumaFusion can already use it. So if you have LumaFusion and you wanna do some audio on your iPad and you have third-party plugins, that's the way you can do it right now if you don't wanna use any of the DAW. And now comes the point why I think for us filmmakers, it's interesting to actually maybe look into Logic because obviously Logic is a music production um, app, software, DAW. It has a lot of capability, capabilities when it comes to audio mastering that DaVinci is maybe limited, especially at the moment when the Fairlight page is still not there. So if you are an audio engineer and you know what to do, right? then you can use Logic and I don't think it's too expensive. Yes, I hate the subscriptions as well, but I think if you really use it professionally, mixing up bands, whatever you do, then I think this is amazing to do that and then bring the audio back into Final Cut or DaVinci or wherever you work, right? And you can do it on the iPad. This is the most important for our iPad only workflow that we have now apps that can do this. Okay. After you decided which subscription you want and you start your test series, you will see this one here without those. Those are my tests that I already did and you can start and create a new project. And then this one opens. And here's a couple of interesting things. Number one, there is tutorials like Logic Pro Tour, then Play Around, like all of those are tutorials. Then you have some feature packs. So how it works is that Logic has already a lot of instruments, effects and, plaque, uh, and, and packs inside, but you can also download them. And the cool thing is you can actually click them here and just listen to them. Okay, okay, okay. And see if you like them or not, and you can download them. A couple of them I downloaded. Then here you have some live loop grips. This is basically like a template where you can already start with a finished looped section. We go over that later. Let's just start for the simple thing. If you start with a fresh track, you can now here in this window decide what kind of tracks you wanna have. Is it a MIDI track? Is it an audio track where you have some recording from outside that you put in? Is it patterns? Is it a drum? In my case now, because I just wanna play around with the instruments a bit, I will go over with the MIDI track. Also, I can do, for example, here already, if I know I'm already working with like, let's say five different uh, MIDI tracks, I can set it to five MIDI, and then it starts now with five MIDI tracks. For the filmmakers, it's exactly the same. Those are my timeline based view, right? I also have a drum, um, a loop view, this one here. So basically now I, very hard to explain if you never used it, but basically you have two views. Um, one is timeline oriented. The other one is more loop based oriented. So I have one place where every like eight seconds and it's repeating and I can just hit start and play, start and play, and then basically loop my thing around. Oh, it's complicated to explain. There are better musicians who can explain that, but I just wanna give you a rundown how this works. So on the left side, we have our database with all of the instruments that we can, we can listen to them, what kind of instrument we can search. So for example, I can go in here and search for piano. And then for example, oh yeah, amplified piano. So, and I can drag this instrument and put it on top of one of my tracks here. For example, this one is now that classic one. I can go here to electronic, see what we have here, an organ. So I track this one up in here as well. So what if I don't wanna have those tracks? So I can also delete, can I also delete unused? Delete unused tracks. Oh, unused means if I haven't done anything with them, basically it deleted all of them. You can also add tracks here on the top and then it's basically the same window again. So it doesn't matter really how you start. You can change that later as well. Let's add another MIDI track. So we have the deluxe here and then let's have the organ. The interface is like this. You can start and stop here on the top. You can open the instrument input. Now we selected the Oakland organ. 
so I can play this. Probably you don't hear it because I'm recording at the same time and I could play here. So for example, one way how you can now just start recording is if we're here in the timeline view and we hit start and record, I can now just play and it will create those MIDI notes same like I, I play them here. If I'm done, I can also hit spacebar and basically just listen to what, <laughs> what crap I just created. I still don't hear anything, so it would be interesting if it actually records or not. But I guess because I'm recording my audio right now, it doesn't really record that one here. So when I select what I just created, I can also go in in the editor. That's the cool thing about MIDI, because MIDI is basically just the information. I can even change the instrument later and it will play a new instrument on top of that MIDI. But this is what it should play, the velocity, how strong or quiet or loud or on, and so on. I can change that here. I can also draw in here and create uh, just manually. Like if you want, you can make music even like this and just place those things. Obviously it's all touch related. What I found personally re very cool is that you actually can turn the iPad sideways and even the whole app is still working. You can change everything and you can also rearrange everything how you like. So what I mean, you can close all of the areas that you don't need. So for example, if I just want to draw now, I can be in the drawing. If I want to go back and play music, I can close my editing here, drag it up here. And you see now, even now I have two keyboards, I can play, make music. If I turn it sideways and I go all up here, I even have three of them, three layers. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and it's very modular. I, this is something that I really like. So if I selected a track, and let's say I like this now and I want to add effects. This is the second one that I have here. Now I see my effects that are already here. I have this vintage thing, the channel EQ. I can go in and load effects from Logic itself. Like for example, the different EQs that I have. Let's do the match EQ. And then you can, some they do here, some you can open like this one. So and let's say you're done with creating there. You can also go and close this and open the mixer itself. The mixer itself also shows you the three different tracks, but from a different view, you can also add effects here, mu uh, select multiple of them, change the, the volume, the pan and everything. So here you basically do all of the mixing. You know that from filmmaking as well. Yeah, I will not go too much over that. What is what I found out after the first day with Logic Pro? I personally think that from those two uh, apps, Logic Pro is maybe even the more advanced app on the iPad than even Final Cut Pro. I think personally, there is a lot of things still missing in Final Cut Pro. Um, I would still have more testing with Final Cut Pro, but what I could see from today, yes, there's stuff missing. And if you look and hear videos from professional musicians, they have, have a couple of complaints. But one thing, for example, that I find amazing that is not happening in Final Cut right now is that you can start working here, bring, bring your project to Logic on the desktop and bring your project from there back in here. So you can swap the projects easily back and forward, back and forward. And it's not that easy with Final Cut. This is something like in DaVinci, no problem. You can work on the desktop, you can work on the iPad. Maybe some features don't work on the iPad if you want to use Fairlight, for example, but then you can go back to the desktop and do it there and bring it back to the iPad. So it works and you can bring it back and forward. You can have the Blackmagic Cloud where you can even share all of your projects with people who are sitting somewhere in the world. So this kind of stuff is working pretty well. Yeah, so this is just a basic overview. The most important that I wanted to give you in this video is basically that maybe it is also interesting to look into Logic Pro if you are, if you like music anyway, then you probably did this anyway. But also from a perspective for us, if we want to mix and master, this is one place that could help us master the tracks that we want. I hope you liked this video. If yes, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding on the bam bang gong, and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.